The tides could delay the arrival of reinforcements by nine hours, enough time for the North Koreans to mount a possible counterattack. All MacArthur's advisors argue that his plan is too risky. The Navy said, let's not do it at Incheon. We have another place we'd want to do it. MacArthur wouldn't listen. He said, we shall land at Incheon and I shall crush them. The Supreme Commander's confidence prevails over all doubt, and the Incheon invasion is on. MacArthur's objective, capture Incheon, liberate the capital Seoul, push the communists out of South Korea. 6.33 AM. Five previous days of air and naval bombardments prepare the way. Then a final deluge from offshore cruisers. The first landing force rides the high tide to Womido Island to take out the North Korean defenders. Their transport, a tactical vehicle that was key to the D-Day landing at Normandy. The LST, landing ship tank. Designed for landings on undeveloped beaches, it carries up to 20 medium tanks and as many as 150 men. The LST was the make or break component of MacArthur's island hopping campaigns in the Pacific during World War II. And now he's using it again to turn the tide in Korea. From the bridge of the USS Mount McKinley, MacArthur watches the first wave of Marines land at Wolmido Island. It was an almost flawless operation. Uh, Incheon faced essentially no resistance. There were only about 2,000 North Korean soldiers in the, in the area. They were completely surprised, were, were rolled up almost immediately. Now the invasion halts for nine hours until the next high tide. Time enough for any nearby enemy forces to attack, but they don't. At around 4.30 p.m., the high tide returns and the main U.S. force hits the beach. 13,000 Marines and over 250 Navy vessels swarm the area. By nightfall, Incheon belongs to the U.N. forces. MacArthur's gamble pays off. Incheon works to perfection. We cut through the North Korean supply lines, and, and essentially the North Korean defenses collapse, and they race back north. 